stop. Do you want to know how to predict and see price changes through what if scenarios in Power BI? In today's YouTube video, I'm going to show you exactly how to handle what if scenarios without changing all of your measures or the entirety of your report. If you haven't checked out the class files down below, make sure to grab them. There you can find this file and directions on how to get to our on-demand learning to check out even more how-to tips there. You're going to notice we have three levels to check on these what-if scenarios. These are really based on a concept in Power BI called field parameters. Think of field parameters as the TV remote. You can use it to change the channel but we don't always have to have 15 different remotes to change the channel. Well, maybe you do. Some people have way too many TV remotes. Here in our report, we can see our base revenue, our total cost, our total volume, and a percent of price increase. You'll also see above, I have three slicers ready to go. What is the field parameter and where is it? Hey, hey, before we get started, make sure you subscribe down below. Subscribing is going to keep you up to date on all of the awesome content. And we're releasing a ton of videos per week to help you in Power BI, Power Apps, Fabric, and even more. To find your field parameter, you're going to go right over to the modeling side of things and you're going to see new parameters. Select to open new parameter and you're going to have the option between a numeric range and a field. Depending on what you choose, you'll get some different results. Let me show you what a numeric range would look like. Numeric range, we'd have a range of numbers from 0 to 20 with an increment of 1. This would then also add a slicer to the page. You'll see here that if I press create, all of a sudden I've got this parameter here. I didn't change the name and I can change it all the way up from increments of 1 to 20. The other thing that happens is you see this new field parameter area. Realistically, if we go to the table view, this is really interesting. It's basically a table that we're leveraging. How it's built is in DAX using something called generate series. Generate series, we start at 0, we go to 20, and then finally, you see here increments of 1. Wow. Knowing this, we now can leverage this a little bit better for three what-if scenarios. Everybody is talking about how price changes might affect their business, whether this is price changes, costs, or a reduction in volume. I want to show you how to be able to tackle that. So what I've done here is I've already pre-created some parameters for us. Let's check out one of the first ones here, which is going to be known as your price increase. Here, I've generated a series that goes all the way up to two in increments of percentages. We go to zero, then a 10%, a 1%, a 2%, three, four, five, you name it. It goes all the way up. You can customize this to be whatever you need. If we go back to the report view and I get rid of the initial parameter, you can see here that our base revenue is $23,000. We have a total cost of 13,000 and a volume of about 1300. You'll also see I've included some other things here. So how can price increases change? Well, the first way to look at this is I have base revenue. So with base revenue, I'm gonna start building from here. Let's look at our price increase area. Here I have base revenue, which is the total revenue. This total revenue relates back to adjusted revenue percent, more on that in a moment, and this price increase value. Well, what I have going on here is a function called selected value. Selected value will reflect what is on my slicer. So if I have this price increase slicer, well, this is value is going to change based on that. So watch here. If I change this up a little bit, this number is going to reflect the exact same. So selected value is how I can leverage that field parameter right here in a measure in Power BI. Okay, but how do I go about this? Well, what I've done here is created our actual adjusted revenue. Adjusted revenue is that base revenue, but I'm timesing it by a little calculation that uses percentages pretty well. I'm gonna take one plus that selected value measure we just used, which is the price increase percentage. So as the slicer changes, that number is gonna change. 
So if we go up 10%, 1 plus 10% times the base revenue, well, we're going to see those prices change. So as our price increases, we'd have 110%. That number is going to go up by 10%. Let's actually see that with our adjusted revenue in this value. Here, I've got adjusted revenue. I'm going to bring that actually in here. You'll notice that the slicer is at zero, which means base revenue and adjusted revenue, they're the same. As I change this up, I've gone up by 10%. That is pretty wild. Now I can see what's going to happen if my prices go up by 10%. How am I going to be affected? It's all based on the field parameter, followed by using selected value, and then for our adjusted revenue, a little bit of DAX magic to actually get those numbers out there for us. So pretty nice here. Once those things are set up, we've got adjusted revenue changing. Your base revenue, that's going to stay the same. Level two, let's move on to our cost reduction. Here you can see our total cost is about $13,000. We've followed the same principles with cost reduction. If I go to cost reduction, I can see here that I have my selected value. I have my field parameter, a total cost that I can use as well, and then an adjusted cost. That functionality works. Now, I did this for percentages, which is a very common use case, but you definitely could use this for others. Looking at adjusted costs here, one major change. We want to see how costs might affect. So I'm actually subtracting here. That means as I go up in numbers here, I'm going to see my adjusted cost is being reduced. If it needed to go the other direction, I could do a plus sign. Or I could do something really, really cool that I'll show you here in level three. Level three, we're doing the exact same functionality here. But you'll notice our volume change is a bit different. Why is our volume change so different? Our volume change is different because when we generated the field parameter for this one, we actually start in the negative, go into the positive, by that 1%. Now, this could be a little bit weird for how our slicer works, and we can make some adjustments, but here you'll notice that our volume is 1350 and our adjusted volume is 1350. Let's imagine we have a massive reduction in our volume. I'll bring that number down, and you'll notice we are now way down. Let me go up a little bit. Oh, even if we had a certain amount, we could still be okay. But a 50% reduction would be really, really bad. Let's say business is booming. Where would we go from here? Well, we could really start to increase our volume. These then can be leveraged in other measures. And you can see the downstream effects of working with field parameters. Let's recap a little bit of what we need to make sure we use. First, field parameters. That's the TV remote that will allow you to have a wide range to put into your slicer. Second, make sure you use selected value. That's going to make the field parameter attached to a measured value. So as someone uses that slicer, they can use it in a ton of calculations. Last but not least, you've got to take a peek at how you want to calculate that adjustment. It's super easy to work with this because you really just need to look at, okay, how would it decrease by a percent? How would it increase by a percent? Match that up and then you are ready to run. The last but not least is remember, when you make those field parameters, you generate a series that you can actually go into the negative and you can adjust this as needed. If you're worried about price changes, volume reduction, cost reduction, I don't think you need to be with Power BI what if calculations through field parameters. This has been Greg Treziak. I hope you enjoyed our next episode of the how-to series. Make sure you slap that like button and I'll see you in the next one.